trouble getting a solid to dissolve, you might want to try sonication. So sonication, it basically breaks up solids into really, really, really tiny pieces, exposing them to the solvent. So like your water or whatever other solvents you have to help it dissolve because it's those solute solvent interactions that make things dissolve. And so the more of those you can let them have, the better. Now, this is going to do this by using ultrasonic waves. And so basically in the sonicator, so this is a bath sonicator, it's going to send out these waves and these waves are going to travel through the liquid and it's going to give you these areas of high pressure and these areas of low pressure. In the areas of low pressure, it's going to be easier for gas bubbles to form. And so this is why say when you open up your soda, like all the bubbles form and the carbon dioxide escapes. This is why in a lyophilizer, we lower the pressure so that we can promote sublimation going from a solid to a gas. And it's why in an autoclave, we raise the pressure in order to allow us to get hotter without things evaporating. In this case, you are going to have those bubbles form, but they're not going to actually be able to escape because bam, the high pressure area is right behind them. This is instead going to make those bubbles basically collapse and send out shock waves. The process called gaseous cavitation. I love that process name, uh, but basically what it's doing is it's sending out these little shock waves and these shock waves are going to encounter that pesky little solid that is not going to dissolve no matter how hard you want it to dissolve unless you put in a little more effort sometimes. And so you can put in that more effort with the sonication. It's going to be able to break things up way better than if you were just crushing things. So you should crush things first in order to kind of allow the sonicator to get to the really fine detail of things. So in those little salt crystals, in those, in those crystals, they might seem so, 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 so small, but that's actually a lot of molecules and it's a lot of kind of hidden area inside of there. And so if you break that up with the sonication, you are increasing the amount of surface area that is actually exposed to the solvent allowing you to get that better solubility or um, dissolving. So if you, you want to use like a bath sonicator for this, you can, depending on the size of your samples, if you have just like a little Eppendorf, if you stick it in some sort of floaty, we didn't have a floaty, so we made a makeshift one out of a box lid, um, but they make those little like foam floaties for Eppendorf tubes. If you have a bigger thing, you can use like a weight to kind of weight it down and hold it in there. Get creative. If you just need a short sonication, you can just hold it. Sometimes a short sonication is all you need. Sometimes you might need longer, a um, few minutes, things like this. Sometimes even longer. It can get a little warm. And so if your sample is sensitive to that, to keep that in mind, you can get temperature controlled ones. You might want to take breaks in between the sonications, things like this. Um, but ba yeah, basically it's good for little samples. It's good for bigger samples. So we use it sometimes when our phosphate buffers uh, or the phosphate stocks, they just kind of like crap out on you and all the solid like crystals come out and it's just a pain in the butt, but the sonicator can help you, can help break that up as well. But it is really helpful for these small little samples. And so that's what we're using it for now, but it is very loud too. So you will want to have some ear protection or at least put it in the hood or walk away or something like that. And then check it periodically to make sure that the sonication is actually working and you're getting things broken up. And so again, be sure to break things up as much as you can beforehand if possible. And so whenever you're trying to dissolve a solid, it's always a good, good idea to have the solid as crushed as possible, but you can't crush it as well physically as you or like manually as you can do with the sonicator so the sonicator does that really hard crushing work for you and remember that's through that gaseous cavitation so you have those areas of high pressure low pressure high pressure low pressure in the low pressure areas the bubbles form the high pressure area then bam it bangs into it causes those bubbles to collapse when they collapse they set up the shock waves the shock waves are then going to hit the solids and cause them to break up. And so this is a bath sonicator, really good for the dissolving solids. We also have probe sonicators and those basically have a probe and they send out these really intense ultrasonic waves out of the probe. And those are really good for when you're trying to do like protein purification and help with your cell lysis and the DNA sharing. Today, sonication for dissolving your solids. I also learned that you can use the sonicator to unclog needles. Well, hopefully you won't need to. Oh yeah.